Hello there guys, it's Michael here, and in this video I'm gonna give you my five-step bulletproof method for mastering any strum pattern. Now, if you're a beginner guitar player looking to get started, this video will make a world of difference and give you everything you need to learn your strum patterns easily and to be able to play them confidently so that your music sounds great. If you've been learning guitar for any number of days, weeks, months, or years, and you're really struggling with strumming patterns and can't change between chords smoothly without stopping to think about what you're doing, then this bulletproof method is gonna be an absolute game changer for you and will have you playing guitar confidently and feeling great about what you're doing. And most importantly, whatever you're playing or trying to play will start sounding like music because it will have that fluency to it like what you hear on the recording. So if you guys are ready, let's get into it. So one of the biggest hurdles faced by beginner and early intermediate guitar players is not being able to change in time without having to stop and think about what you're doing. You might be able to strum chords uh, and change smoothly when you're just doing one strum, but as soon as you add in a pattern, what happens is it goes to hell. It stops working, you can't change smoothly, and it kills the fluency of the music. This can be very, very frustrating because whatever you're working on just doesn't sound like what you're trying to play along to. Now, the best analogy I can give you is driving a manual car, and if you've ever driven sticks before, you realize how complicated it is in the beginning when one hand's responsible for the gear, the other hand's responsible for the, uh, the steering wheel, you've got to look around, not crash into things, and your feet have to go up and down. It is just way too overwhelming for most beginner drivers. It's really frustrating, and most people's, the worst day of their life up until that point is the first time they drive a manual car, because it, it's very frustrating, it's very overwhelming, and you totally suck at it for the first couple of days, if not first couple of weeks and even months. Similarly, what we find with our guitar playing is if our fretting hand is trying to coordinate complex chord shapes, and our strumming hand is trying to move up and down in time, it is just way too overwhelming, especially as a beginner. Our brain CPU power is uh, getting divided between these two uh, items of practice, these two actions, and of course what happens, this one needs 90%, this one needs 90%, we've only got 100%, there's gonna be a system error and our CPU is gonna crash. What we need to do is break down each movement in isolation and get control of them. What we need to do is work on each movement in isolation. We wanna break down these complex macro movements into their smaller micro parts, get really good at executing each movement in isolation, build it into muscle memory, and then once that happens, we can bring the other hand in and create a more meaningful whole from the sum of all the parts. Now, before we get into this, guys, we need to have an understanding of four of our note rhythms. I'm not gonna make this a big, long theory lesson, but by having a basic understanding of rhythm and timing values and how it works, it will make a huge impact on your ability to execute these strumming patterns and develop good timing. So the first note that we need to learn is our semi-brief or our whole note. These notes go for four counts and we simply need to clap them three times and understand that we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Do that with me three times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. If you can do that, fantastic. The next note that we need to learn is our minimum or our half note. These go for two counts and we would clap one, two, three, four in a bar of four, four. Clap along with me three times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The next note that we need to learn is a crotchet or a quarter note. And basically we're gonna do one clap per count. One, two, three, four. Do that with me three times. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now the last note we need to learn is our quaver or eighth note. Now we are gonna have two of these per beat, two uh, quavers add up to one crotchet, two eighth notes add up to one quarter note. There are gonna be two claps per count like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So not only do we clap the main beats one, two, three, four, but we also clap the half note in between, the and. One and two and three and four and. So we're gonna have a total of eight claps per bar of music. Now if I went through that really fast, what you can do is just pause the video here, rewind and go through and clap along, but it is really important that you know those rhythms and understand how they work and can clap and count along with them before we dive into our strumming patterns. Because if we can read the music, if we can internalize the amount of counts we need to go for each one, then we can transfer it to a guitar. But if we don't understand it up here, then our instrument cannot bring it to life and make sound out of it. So now that you have an understanding of basic rhythms, what I can do is introduce you to my five-step bulletproof process for mastering any strumming pattern. 
If you apply these five steps in the right sequence, then you can learn anything quickly and efficiently and use the same process to master it in a single practice session if you're really quick with it and you take it in properly or over a couple of days or a couple of practice sessions. It's not gonna take weeks or months to get these strumming patterns down. It will happen unbelievably fast when you use your brain the right way to learn things properly. So what are the five steps? Basically, step number one is counting your way through the rhythm. You're not gonna have a guitar in your hand for this one. You're simply gonna look at whatever notes on the page, whatever the strumming pattern is, and you're gonna count your way through it out loud. Again, if you can understand what's going on up here, then you can bring it to life on the instrument. But so many people dive straight to trying to play the chords and do the strumming pattern at the same time. What you need to do is work on the strumming pattern in isolation without any chords or even a guitar. And the very first step is basically saying the rhythm out loud, being able to count your way through it. Step number two is going to be clapping the rhythm. And once again, you do not need the guitar in your hand to do this. You simply need to read the notes off the page while clapping them out loud. It's a very, very basic step. But once again, you need to see the target, you need to aim at the target, and you need to fire at the target, and you need to get good at these basic levels and show your understanding of the strumming pattern and the rhythm by being able to clap it before you complicate things by putting a guitar in your hand. Step number three is when we finally get to grab our guitar and have some fun, but we're not gonna dive straight into playing chords and progressions. No, what we're gonna do is just strum on muted strings. So once again, we're gonna focus 100% of our attention on our strumming hand and just getting the movement down. Once we do that, we'll be ready to move on to step number four, which is basically strumming on a single chord. And once again, we're not diving right into the deep end and trying to complicate things by changing between chords. We don't wanna overload our CPU. We're just gonna hold a simple shape with our fretting hand and focus all of our attention on strumming. This is basically an extension of step number three, but it's gonna sound a lot more interesting because we're gonna hear the chord. Now, when we finally have done all of those first steps, one through to four, we are ready to apply what we know to a basic chord progression. Now, I recommend you only do a two chord switch or something very, very simple. And as you get the hang of it, as the muscle memory kicks in, as you can change smoothly without pausing and thinking about what you're doing, you can start tackling more increasingly difficult and complex chord progressions. But in the beginning, we just wanna keep it simple with a two chord switch. So now that we know the five steps we need to master any strumming pattern, we are gonna apply it to learning the most basic of all strumming patterns. One strum per four counts, where we are going to basically go through using a whole note, or as we know it uh, by another name, a semi-breathe there. So step number one is simply reading it and talking our way through it. We can see a whole note strumming pattern. We're simply gonna say aloud, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You're gonna count your way through it five times. Then we're gonna move on to step number two where we clap it. Now, I'm just gonna do it three times for the sake of this demonstration, otherwise it's gonna be a half an hour long video, but of course, pause this video after each step and do it up to five times on your own. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So get the basic hang of clapping it there. Then it's time for step number three, where we pick up our guitar and we're just gonna lightly rest our fingers on the strings. I'm not gonna squeeze, I'm not gonna fret. I just wanna get this muted sound. I don't want this. It sounds terrible. I just wanna lightly touch the strings and I'm gonna go, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm strumming and I'm counting. So once again, it's just a mental game of understanding what I need to do and strumming to execute. Now, as a bonus step, you can say whatever the strumming pattern is as you do it. For example, down, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. That can be a really helpful step for some people to vocalize the direction that they need to strum in time with whatever rhythm is presented. We'll show you a bit more on that later. But for now, let's move on to step number four. So step number four is where we finally get to add a chord to it and make it sound really good. So the easiest thing to do is just an E minor chord because it uses all six strings, so we're not complicating the uh, strumming hand task by you only having to hit like five strings or four strings and make it harder. We're simply gonna blanket strum down and get everything we need. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, it's really, really important we count out loud that we talk our way through it. The more neural connections we make by saying it out loud, by saying the strumming pattern direction, by counting our way through it, the stronger that is gonna be in our muscle memory and the greater our ability to retain that information. So it's really important that you say it, even if it makes you feel silly. Now, step number five is where we're gonna add in additional chords and apply it to a strumming pattern. Now, my recommendation was just to take a two chord switch, for example, E minor to G, and go E minor, two, three, four, G, two, three, 
4 E minor 2 3 4 G 2 3 4 E minor 2 3 4 G 2 3 4 and when you get the hang of basic switches like that you can add in more and more chords or apply it to a progression like knocking on heaven's door G 2 3 4 D 2 3 4 A minor 2 3 4 A minor 2 3 4 so there you go guys, you have learned the five step bulletproof method and you've applied it to your very first basic strumming pattern. Now that wasn't really all that challenging and you've probably done something similar in terms of that strumming pattern without the five steps. But now let's go through two more strumming patterns. So the next strumming pattern we're gonna learn is a basic four to the floor, four strums per chord strumming pattern. Now step number one, we're just gonna basically count out loud as we read the notes off the page or the screen. It's gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Make sure you do that five times in your own time whenever you're learning these patterns. Step number two is we're gonna clap it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Step number three, we grab our guitar and on muted strings, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And of course, go as slow as you need to. I'm of course rushing a little bit for the demonstration, but simply work your way through it at your own pace as slow as you need to make it smooth and consistent. Step number four, I'm gonna add in a single chord. Again, the E minor chord's easy because it uses all six strings. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the final step, number five, is to do a two chord switch or add to a progression. So I'm gonna do E minor and G. E minor, two, three, four, G, two, three, four. E minor, two, three, four. E minor, two, three, four, G. Now guys, hopefully you didn't find that too challenging and I'm guessing the vast majority of you will have found those first two really, really easy and that's great. But the principle here is we are training you to adopt these five steps. When you get to these more complex strumming patterns, which you are actually gonna struggle with, if you try and skip steps or you go straight to playing and strumming at the same time, that's what's gonna to lead to you being confused and overwhelmed. But if you go through these five steps, you'll be able to break it apart piece by piece, learn it properly, learn it once, retain it forever, and be able to jump straight into playing much sooner because you've done the hard work and laid the foundation that you need to build from. So even though it's easy right now, do not skip any of these steps when you start learning more complex patterns. So if you're liking this video so far, please make sure you hit that like button because it does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and helps me out. We're gonna learn two more things, guys. And once we get this next part down, you'll have everything you need to lay the foundation for every single strum pattern that you're ever gonna learn. So the final step in the, the groundwork phase here is the eighth notes. Now this is where we're actually gonna be strumming down and up and it's gonna be a little bit more complex. So the eighth notes, if we're gonna go to step number one, we're gonna talk and say one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. We're still counting the main beats, one, two, three, four, but we have the and, the off beat in between each one and they need to be consistent. We don't wanna have one and two and three and four. Well, maybe in a blues song we would, but as a beginner, you wanna make sure that each note that you say, whether it's one and two and all the way up to four and, has equal weighting, equal value. So once you can say it, step number two is clapping it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Step number three is gonna be tricky because we need to strum it on our guitar and you may need to pause this video and spend a couple of minutes just getting this down pat. Basically for every number, you're gonna strum down. One, two, three, four. And every offbeat, when you say and, you're gonna strum up. One and two and three and four and. Now that is gonna be tricky, especially if you're not used to up strums or you've never done upstrokes before. Try not to swivel your hand like this. You don't wanna dip in and fly away. We're not Superman going up, up and away. You wanna basically go down, up, down, up, down, up, and you don't wanna swivel your pick either. You are not going like that. We wanna go down, up, down, up with minimum movement. Down, up, down, up down, up, down, up. If you want another analogy, basically imagine having a computer mouse in your hand and you're moving it across the desk like that. You're not gonna slam it down like that and pivot it like that. You just basically wanna slide down, slide up, down, up, down, up, down, up. 
So guys, pause this video if you need to, spend as long as you have to to get that smooth and consistent where you can get all six strings. And again, watch out for the dip, try and just go down and up. Once you get the hang of that, we can add an E minor chord in for step number four and go one and two and three and four and. And once again, pause the video for a minute or two and just work on that in isolation and then move on to step number five, which is gonna be the two chord switch, E minor. G. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So that is probably gonna be way more challenging for you. And if that's the case, fantastic. You're in the exact right zone where you need to work and improve it. But once you get the hang of playing quarter notes, one, two, three, four, and then eighth notes, one and two and three and four, and you can of course go out and learn a whole bunch of really, really basic strumming patterns, all the absolute fundamental, essential strumming patterns you need as a beginner. Now, what do I mean by this? Basically, all of your basic strumming patterns are gonna be comprised of different combinations of quarter notes and eighth notes, just rearranged in different configurations. So if you can learn one set of eighth notes and one set of quarter notes, and then just mix and match them, then of course, you're just playing the same movements over and over. If you master the fundamental movements of executing a downstroke on a quarter note and a down up on an eighth note, every strumming pattern you play at a basic level is gonna be different configurations of these eight notes. Get good at the basic movements and then you'll get good at the sum of all the parts, which are our strumming patterns. So what we're gonna do is pick out one more strumming pattern to learn using this method. And on the screen right now, you can see a collection of eight beginner guitar strumming patterns, which you can use to apply to any song and make it sound really, really great. This of course is from my beginner guitar course. So if you'd like this diagram, along with uh, a more in-depth lesson on strumming and examples of me teaching you every single pattern here, by all means, subscribe to my free course by clicking the link in the description. You get access to the strumming pattern lessons, the chord lessons, and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. But we're just gonna pick out one and apply this five-step routine for learning and mastering this. And again, as I mentioned before, once you learn one of these patterns, Every other pattern is just a different configuration of the same notes. So it gets really easy once you've learned the first one to apply that knowledge to every consecutive pattern after that. This is why I said it's important to learn the process because when you get good at the process, the outcome will become really, really easy. And every single strumming pattern you learn after the first one, you will of course learn much more easily because you've already put in the hard work to attain the skills that you need. So we've picked out this pattern here and what we're basically gonna do is go through step number one and talk our way through it while counting. It's one, two and three, four and. One, two and three, four and. Now what we're gonna do is clap the rhythm. One, two and three, four and. One, two and three, four and. Make sure you do that up to five times and if you wanna go that extra step of saying out loud the strumming direction, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. That can be really, really helpful because it gives you that extra layer of connection in your brain. Step number three, we're gonna strum that on the muted strings. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. and of course, if you wanna say down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, that will be really helpful once again. Once you get the hang of that, you can add in the E minor chord there and go down, down, up, down, down, up, one, two, and three, four, and. And of course, I'm saying you're doing it three times, five times. If you need to do it 10 times, 25 times, 50 times, do it as many times as you need to feel confident with it. Then the final step is taking a chord progression and adding the strum pattern to the chord progression. Down, down, up, 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 down, down, up. So there you go guys, you've added another strumming pattern to your repertoire and hopefully by following these five steps have gained the ability to learn not just that pattern but any other strumming pattern that you are trying to learn. So what do we do next? Basically I recommend you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already so you can keep up to date with all the awesome videos I'm putting out which are gonna make you a much better player in a fraction of the time it took me. Then check out my free course below so you can learn the other seven strumming patterns. It's gonna be essential to helping you learn effectively and master strumming patterns, no matter how simple or how complex. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.